Welcome to week three of Vacation Bible School. So today, we are going to look at the book of Revelation. Now, Revelation can be kind of scary because it's confusing. It's, um, John basically kind of has a, uh, a dream or a vision of heaven. And there's a whole lot of things that happen, but basically the biggest things about Revelation is that it shows that Jesus is on the throne, and that's Jesus, the crucified Savior. He is now on the throne, and he is sitting at the right hand of God. And then it shows the battle between uh, the devil and the angels and God, but it shows that God is victorious. And then it shows the new creation and that's what we will talk about but first let's pray stick her in and your left hand and put them together and repeat after me dear jesus dear jesus thank you thank you for ruling for ruling and making and making all things all things new new so all of our lessons this week are going to talk about the book of Revelation, which is the very last book of the Bible, and it can seem kind of scary and confusing like we talked about, but at the very end of the Bible, it's kind of awesome because the end of the Bible brings us way back to the beginning when God created uh, the heavens and the earth. We go back to the beginning because God, through Jesus, is making all things new, including you and including me. So let's read from the uh, Bible, or the story Bible here, about John's vision of heaven. And this comes from Revelation chapter 21 and 22. John wrote about what Jesus showed him. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And I saw the holy city of New Jerusalem, and I heard a loud voice from the throne of heaven. It said, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. There shall not be crying or pain anymore. The Lord said, Behold, I am making all things new. Write this down. These words are trustworthy and true. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. He showed me the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit. And behold, Jesus said, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel. And he said to me, You must not do that. I am a servant with you. Worship God. Jesus said, I am the first and the last. Surely, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. And that is how the book of Revelation ends. That's how the Bible ends. Now, this world, especially I think right now as we're kind of waiting, can be a little bit of a rough place. And it's easy uh, to be brought to tears and to be brought to sadness. And there's a lot of people that are hurting in all kinds of different ways. Now, in all of the adventures that we've shown you with our characters, the sloth hasn't been with them yet. So let's check in to see what happened next on our character's adventure. Oh, it's okay, Sammy. It's okay. It's okay, Sammy. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, Sammy. It's okay. Yeah. You got donuts? You got donuts? Oh, donuts? You drove all the way to that Nebraska? 
Yeah. Donuts? Oh, we got donuts? Wow. Oh, let me get out. Wow. You guys didn't eat too much of the corn palace, did you? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. Well, you weren't hopefully filled on donuts and corn, but you know, you guys are missing somebody. You, you forgot your new friend, Sandy. What? 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 Did you guys not wait for her? No. 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 Well, why didn't you wait for Sandy? We left at seven a.m. We left at seven a.m. I thought we told her to be there at seven a.m. Oh. Um, no, I think there might be a p.m. a.m. Well, the sloth is a little slow. You guys got to give it a little bit more time sometimes. You know, this is a good picture, but this was a good trip. This was a good thing, but I think we can make this better. Sammy, can you stand up for me? Yeah. You know what I think we can do? I think we can add Sammy to this adventure, even though she wasn't there. We can make this adventure new and we can include her next time. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. Sorry, Sammy. Sorry, Sammy. Well, that's a much more happy video, especially for our slot because their waiting has ended. And someday, our waiting for Jesus to come back will end. Now, we may not be here on this earth when Jesus comes back, but even if we die, and I think of my dad especially, when I think of this, these verses about um, there not being any pain, there not being any crying, um, or that every tear will be wiped away, that he right now is experiencing what John talks about. And someday you will experience that, someday I will experience that, whether that's while we're still on this earth and Jesus comes again, or, well, you know, if we die and we join with Jesus in heaven, but we're waiting for that time where all things can be made new and where we will be with him. Now we have a Bible verse for today that comes from the book of Romans, and this is going to be two Bible verses, and this is Romans 8, 24, and 25. For in this hope, and that hope is the, um, the assurance that uh, Jesus uh, does what he promised and that all creation will be made new. For in this hope, we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Now it's hard to be patient sometimes, but this hope that we have of joining Jesus, we can wait with that with patience because we can trust in God's promises and in the fact that Jesus makes all things new, which is our take-home point tonight. So let's get a little bored here again. Well, we wait. Jesus, hmm, what should we do for Manx? Let's, let's form a plan. So here we go. So, well, we wait. Jesus makes all things new. Let's do that again. While we wait, Jesus makes all things new. We'll see you at the end of the different lessons. Hi there, welcome to Storytelling Time for week three. Today, we are at the end of the Bible, but we actually kind of go back to the beginning. At the end, John gets a vision, and he sees Jesus on the throne, and he interacts with all kinds of people, and he um, gets to see a glimpse of the battle of good and evil, 
but mostly that Jesus is still sitting on the throne and that he is coming soon. Because this is where it comes to our turn to wait, because we are waiting for Jesus to come again. So let's do a little sneak peek into heaven. So we have John. Now this is the disciple John. He is no longer the young boy slash man that he was. He is now an old man and he is on an island where he is given a vision and he gets to see into heaven. And he sees a new heaven and a new earth, so that new creation is back, and a new holy city, and he sees the throne, and he hears that God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and the death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for all those old things have passed away, because Jesus is I will make all things new. He is making all things new. And then John gets another vision of an angel. And this angel shows him a river of the water of life. And that water flows from the throne. And he also sees the tree of life. And the angel tells him that there will be no night anymore. They won't need light from lamp or the sun because Jesus will be their light. In heaven, Jesus is the light. And then Jesus says that he is the Alpha and the Omega, and John looks over and he says, then somebody asks him, Sir, who are those people? Sir, you know. And he sees people white as snow in their clean robes and it is said in Revelation 22, Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life. And those people didn't do anything to wash those robes on themselves. Those robes were washed by Jesus' blood on the cross. And then John looks at another vision and hears Jesus say I am coming soon and the one who hears this me John testifies that he has heard all of these things and the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all Now that's just a little sneak peek, but we are waiting, but even while we wait, God is doing what needs to be done to make all things new. Welcome to uh, week three. Uh, this week we were in the book of Revelation and we were talking about uh, kind of John seeing a glimpse into heaven and also waiting on Jesus's return. So even, you know, we think of all the waiting that the Old Testament people did, you know, they were waiting for promises to be fulfilled about, you know, the birth of the Messiah, who is Jesus. Uh, they're waiting to be freed from Egypt on the bondage of slavery. They're waiting to return to their lands in exile. But really, we've been doing the most waiting. Since Jesus died, and then was risen and ascended into heaven, we've been waiting for his return. And that's, you know, not quite 2,000 years. So we've been waiting. Now, the book of Revelation has a lot going on. Um, and before we get into it, 
What do you do when you are confused? Talk about that amongst yourselves. So, there's all kinds of different things that I do when I'm confused. Uh, I can go and talk to somebody that maybe knows a little bit more about something. I can, uh, you know, if I'm reading something and it confuses me, I reread it. Or you know, if I'm listening to something and I'm like, oh, that's confusing. Can you repeat that? But when you're confused, usually you try to figure it out so that you're not confused. Now, if you were thinking to yourself, oh man, I just really want to start reading the Bible. I think that I'm going to start with the book of Revelation. I would say, don't, don't do that. The book of Revelation, that's going to be a bit confusing for um, your first things to read. But as we look at the book of Revelation in the context of the rest of scripture, it makes sense. Now, a lot of people try to just look at Revelation and try to pick apart different things so that it suits what they're trying to do. That's not really what what uh, the book of Revelation is uh, written to do. But in the book of Revelation, we get uh, John uh, has this vision of heaven and he sees all these crazy, awesome things. And some of it's just crazy. Like we read it and we're like, whoa, that, that doesn't make any sense. But basically what he sees is he sees um, a battle in heaven between, uh, between you know, the forces of good and the forces of evil. Uh, he sees Jesus sitting on the throne. And this is Jesus who you know, still bears the marks of his crucifixion sitting on the throne. He sees angels. He sees all these people in heaven. But he sees basically the battle and then the victory. So the part that we're reading today here is the victory. So these are portions of the last two chapters of Revelation. So we're going to read some of it, and then we'll discuss. So this is uh, Revelation chapter 21, and then we'll skip ahead to 25, 22. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And now we're going to jump ahead to chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Then jumping ahead a couple verses, And night shall be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And then jumping a few verses again to verse 12. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, and the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. And then skipping a little bit to the end again. And so this is the end of the book of Revelation and the end of our Bible. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. So if you ever tried to fix something, maybe talk about a time where you have tried to fix or clean or make something new. Now, for me, 
trying to think of things that I've fixed because I'm not going to find many things that I've cleaned because that's not my thing. But things that I have fixed, you know, I don't know if there's necessarily things that I've fixed, but you know, at my work where I worked uh, uh, selling merchandise for the University of Minnesota and the state fair and stuff, we would put together stores and we would walk into the stores and they would look like a bomb had gone off. And then you would walk in and you would do some stuff and then you would, you know, fix it up, make it look nice. And it was like, now this is a store or with different booths and stuff. It'd be like, now this is what it's supposed to look like. So it was a store and it was a booth, but we made it new. We made it better. Now in the book of Revelation, it's kind of interesting because we're at the end, but we're really back at the beginning because we get this garden kind of look and this city kind of look. So we get back to the tree of life and we get back to this river flowing just like in creation it talks about the garden of eden and there's river flowing and there's this tree of life and then we get different descriptions of jesus that there's no need for lights in heaven because jesus is the light which we hear about in the gospels we you know hear about him being a descendant of david in revelation which if you go to Christmas services, you hear a lot about him being a descendant of David. And then you hear all of these things about heaven and about him coming soon to us, which again, it's been quite a while and he's not here, but way back at the beginning, it talks about the behold the dwelling place of god is with man he will dwell with them and they will be his people and god himself will be with them as their god so even though we are in a time of waiting for god god is here with us when we go up to this altar and your parents have communion they are receiving god when you were baptized at a font like the one that we have here or at a different one, God was there. God is with us. He says where two or more are gathered. And right now there's two of us making this video. So God is here. And the place where he lives is with his people. So as you listen to this video right now, you're not waiting on God. He's there with you. But we are waiting for all things to be made new. We are waiting for that time where creation will have that reset button and things will be started over again. We are waiting for that time where it says in Revelation verse 21, or verse 4 of chapter 21, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. We still live in a time of mourning and sadness and pain. And, you know, I think to um, my uh, father's uh, dying, he's already living some of this stuff right now. And I look forward to the time where I can see him again and my grandparents and other people that I have known who have been in the faith who have passed away. But our God, even though it feels like we're sometimes far away from him and sometimes that we're waiting on him, we are in a way waiting. But what we are waiting for is, I think, summed up very well in verse 5 of chapter 1 where it says behold I am making all things new we are being made new uh, God is making his creation his heavens and his earth new 
and we wait for that time where, just like at the end of Revelation, where it says, uh, Amen, come Lord Jesus. So truly, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. But let's close with a quick prayer. So repeat after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. We know. We know. You are sending your Son. You are sending your Son. Jesus. Jesus. To bring us home. To bring us home. With you. With you. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to week three of VBS this year. And um, uh, tonight we're talking about Jesus making all things new. And uh, sometimes we wonder what that means, but even in our own lives, um, have you ever gotten in trouble with your mom or your dad and, and you've done something wrong and you know you shouldn't have done it and it just really makes you feel bad, doesn't it? And so sometimes when you go and you tell someone you're sorry and you apologize for what you've done and, and your mom or your dad will hug you or maybe it's a friend even and they tell you it's all right, they forgive you. You just feel so much better and, and we feel so good when that happens. And when we do that for someone else too that's wronged us, and we tell them we forgive them and we forget about it. It helps your friendships be better and it just makes everything good. Well, in our lives, because we sin against Jesus and against other people, we start to feel that way too. We know we've done wrong and, and uh, uh, we want to make things right, but because of sin, we can't make it right in God's eyes. But um, when we wait on the Lord, Jesus makes everything new, the Bible tells us. And, and so tonight, the experiment that Carla is going to show you in a second, that's what it will show, kind of how Jesus does this. But when we go to the Lord and we ask for forgiveness, Jesus will always forgive us our sins and, and forget that sin. He'll throw it away so he doesn't remember it anymore. And, and in Revelation, it talks about the Christians washing their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And what that means is that when we go to the Lord for forgiveness, because Jesus died on that cross and shed his blood for us. He washes us clean and forgives us with his blood. And, and so as we wait on the Lord, Jesus will always make everything new. And, and here's a, a little experiment Carla has for you to kind of show you so we can see it with our eyes, how Jesus makes us new again. Hi boys and girls. As, as you can see, we have our experiment for tonight. And I have three cups. One is you, one is sin, and one is Christ. And one of the things is, is that we know this world is full of sin. And so we are always going to be tainted by sin. And look what happens when we sin. We become dark and gloomy. But you know, one of the things that is so amazing to have happen is that God sent his son Jesus to us. And when he sent his son to us, it wipes away our sin. And as we pour Christ into us, we can see that our sins are washed away. And that is such an amazing thing to have happen, is that our sins are washed away when we are baptized and we get confirmed and we continue in that faith throughout our lives that Christ does cleanse us from our sins. And one of the things that uh, we would like to just reiterate, and I know some of you kids have actually seen it, is, is that sin always with Christ gets washed away. It's always going to be gone. So keep those prayers that, like we had talked about last night, constantly keep those prayers all the time and stay with Christ because he is going to keep you straight and narrow for the rest of your life to come. Our take home point for tonight is from Romans chapter 8 verses 24 and 25. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And again that is from Romans chapter 8 verses 24 and 25.
Well, hello, boys and girls. We are back again for this week for our lesson, for your lesson today in Revelation. And so today we have a Bible verse that I would like to teach to you. It is from Revelation 21, verse 4. He will wipe away every tear is the title of it. So repeat after me. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain any more. Neither mourning nor crying nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. Revelation 21, verse 4. Now I'd like to go back to the part where it says, there be, okay, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. Now, the word mourning does not refer to the morning when you get up. It refers to more like grief or sadness when someone has passed away or we have mourning or we're sad when something disappears or animals. So it is spelled, it has a U in the word, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, not just M-O-R-N-I-N-G. So I want you to understand that part of it. So neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, nor sadness. All of that is going to go away. Okay, so it goes like this. So our next song today is called, Oh, Sing to the Lord. So our first verse um, is, it's going to go like this. So dance for our God and blow all the trumpets. And we repeat that three times. And then we sing and sing to our God and sing to our God. And so my helper, Andy, is going to talk about dancing. All right, so for the actions on this one, uh, where it says dance, do your best dance. 
And then if you want to have your mom or dad take a picture or a little video of your dance, um, then they can send that. So, you know, you can do this, you know, the water thing, the dad thing, whatever you're feeling. This is your time to come up with a, motion, uh, a hand gesture. And then trumpets is just gonna be this, and sing is just gonna be this, and then we'll teach you the uh, second verse when we get to that. But dance your little heart out. Okay, here we go. So here's a little intro. So we got dance. when we repeat this. For Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. For Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. For Jesus is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. O oh, sing to our God. O oh, sing to our God. Okay, here we go. You ready? after me soon and very soon soon and very soon we are going to see the king we are going to see the king soon and very soon soon and very soon we are going to see the king we are going to see the king soon and very soon soon and very soon we are going to see the king we are going to see the king. Alleluia, hallelujah. Alleluia, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. We're going to see the king. And we're, there's three verses in this song, but we're going to sing the first one with the actions. All right. to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. 
No more crying there. We are going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. No more crying there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. We're going to see the king. All right, we're going to sing that verse. No more crying there. to see the king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. We're going to see the king. Okay, here we go. No more time there. We are going to see the to see the king. Okay, here we go.
Hi everyone, welcome back to Crafting. Today you learned in your lesson about revelations and how God makes things new. Today we are going to make a sun catcher cross, which reminds us of how God saved us through the cross in Christ dying. You will get one like this. There's a couple different designs, so whichever one you get. And you can take markers. You can use Sharpies. You can use Crayola markers. Whichever ones you want. And you can design it however you want. And then at the end, you will be able to attach your suction cup hook, which will be included in your pack. And then you can hang them on your windows. And they'll have a nice reminder of how God saved us through the cross. Welcome to the closing for week three of Vacation Bible School. So all of our lessons this week were about the book of Revelation. Now Revelation, again, can be kind of uh, scary and confusing. I would recommend that you don't just open up your Bible and start reading Revelation because you'll be a little bit confused. But if you do something like that, just remember the main points are that Jesus fought the battle. He died for me and you. He has won the war against the devil, even though the devil doesn't necessarily know it yet. And that he is reigning on the throne of God, and he is making all things new for you and for me. Now, in this time of coronavirus, we have all kinds of different things that we're waiting to find out if this is going to happen or if that's going to happen. And one of the things that isn't able to happen is vacation Bible school. So I wait for the time that we can be together again, and we wait for the time that we can be with Jesus, whether that's him coming again, or us going to join him. We are in a constant state of waiting. So our theme is, well, I guess we're at the end here. So our theme was waiting on God, but well, we are waiting on God, he is still doing things. Sometimes when we're waiting in lines, nothing is happening. But when we wait on God, God is still working. I hope you enjoyed our Vacation Bible School. I hope you're able to join us for our closing celebration on August, the third Sunday in August. Hold on a second. The third Sunday in August, which is August 16th, because I have a good memory, and we will do something. Plans are still kind of in the works. But uh, we hope to uh, do some sort of celebration. So hopefully you've taken some pictures of your kids doing this vacation Bible school. Send those to me so we can have a compilation of wacky stuff. But as we end this year's vacation Bible school, let's close with prayer. Stick your right hand and your left hand and put them together. And repeat after me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you, Thank you for keeping, for keeping your, promise your promise to make all things, to make make all things new. 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 And actually, we need to do all of our take-home points again. We haven't even done the, the tonight's during the closing. Silly Andy. All right, let's do our week one. Hopefully you remember that because that's a long time ago. So let's get our waiting. Well, we wait. God gives us his word. Week number two. <sighs> While we wait, God hears us. And for this week, see if Andy can remember it, because his brain gets full of all kinds of things. While we wait, <sighs> Jesus makes all things new. We'll hope to see you in person next year at our Vacation Bible School here at Eternal Hope. God bless.